Number 10 here from this specimen paper with Vance Tire. It's only three marks and you've got this rather nasty looking differentiation to carry out. It does say though, using logarithmic differentiation or otherwise. Well, if you didn't use logarithms here, that would actually become quite a cumbersome beastie because that side would stay as e to the y but be multiplied by the derivative of that inner function there, dy by dx. And this would turn into a big nasty quotient rule. You've got the denominator, and this part in the top here is made up of a product, but a product of an expression and another function of a function. So you don't want to be doing that. No, that naturally just pops into logarithm anyway. If e to the y is this, then y is just going to be log of that side. It'll be ln of 3x plus 2 times e to the 2x over 2x minus 1 squared. I also did see here that x was greater than a half, so you don't have any moduluses anywhere because both of those expressions are going to be greater than zero. So, now you can use your logs to split it all apart. There's three bits here and they've also got powers in them that can pop out to the front. So, we've got ln of, and you can safely just write 3x plus 2, Plus you've got ln of this. Now ln of e is just going to pop back to 2x. I'm just going to jump straight in with that. Rather than writing ln of e to the 2x, which just means what power of e is e to the 2x? 2x. The denominator will be minus, and it's power 2, so I'll put that to the front, 2 ln of, and it's quite safe to write 2x minus 1. Now, in fact, there's two marks there already. There was one just for rewriting this in log form, whether you actually went to the trouble of saying I'll take the log of this side and the log of that side, which you didn't need to because there was a log tucked in here already. And there's one mark for expanding it out. Now, you can just differentiate it, term by term. It's a log, so it'll be 1 over, but it's a function of a function. The derivative then of the function is 3. That's just 2. And that's, that'll go underneath. 2x minus 1, you multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2, times the 2 makes 4. Now, normally, you would think that would need tidying up. But in the marking scheme, because it was only three marks, that's your final mark. But I think if I was sitting in the exam, I would say, no, I don't quite like that. I'd rather just tidy that up into a single fraction, because there's no need for them to appear in separate parts when they're all essentially the same type of expression as in rational expressions. So that means I'd have to have three of them, plus two of the whole lot. I think I'll just multiply it out just now, see if doing it in a separate line. So multiplying those two parts together, I'll put that in a bracket, I'll just put that in a bracket as well, would give me 6x squared minus 3 plus 4 is plus x, minus 2, and then I'll have 4 of them. This bit's going to take longer than the whole of the rest of the question together. And yes, you were saying, but you could just have stopped there. Well, in the marking scheme, yes, but I just don't think that's a satisfactory answer when those three things should go together. Now I'll have to tidy that lot up. But I can just do it in one go just by picking out the terms I want. So the denominator was 3x plus 2, 2x minus 1, and this will finally be dy by dx. And then looking for the x squared terms, I've got well, there's one here, 12, and that's all. Then the x terms, I've got 6, and another 2 makes 8. But take away 12 is minus 4x. And the number part, I've got minus 3, and minus 4 is minus 7, and minus 8 is minus 15. So there's the answer for no marks. Because according to the marking scheme, the marks stopped here. But I would have said it should have gone to there.